Adam Lerner, and today we're going to talk a little bit about film cameras. Um, I started off shooting film in college and had my own darkroom, and I did my own processing and developing and enlarging and all that kind of great stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And we, we really just focused on black and white back then because that's what the, uh, the lab, you know, had us do. Um, this is my first film camera. It's a Pentax ME Super. It's kind of a compact 35 millimeter camera from the 80s. It has a nice light meter built in. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of Pentax lenses that are available. And uh, it's actually kind of a fun camera to shoot with. In fact, you know, right now, if you were to look around, you could probably find one of these fairly cheap. And, uh, you know, the lenses, you know, the whole thing you probably get under 100 bucks. Um, another camera that uh, I recently picked up at a flea market is this Zenit. This is a uh, giant tank of a camera. This was built in the USSR. This is another 80s camera. This has metering. It actually has a hot shoe for a flash. It came with the, uh, the 58 millimeter F2, which, um, you know, from what I've read is very sharp. I've got my first roll of film in it. I can't wait to uh, see what the results are. And I will post and share them with you. And interestingly, when I first saw it, due to its giant body size, I thought it was a 120 millimeter film or medium format film camera. And it is not. 35 millimeter, built like a tank, and lots of fun to use. Over here, we have my father's Voigtlanger. Um, or Voigtlander, sorry, Voigtlander. This is a German camera. Uh, this, this is actually a, a recent edition that was licensed uh, by Voigtlander and built in Japan. It has a nice little sharp 35 millimeter F2.5 pancake lens and it is a range finder camera. That means it doesn't have a pentaprism. So it takes a little bit of get, getting used to with focusing. Um, the pancake lens is kind of interesting, like the aperture dial kind of works um, counterintuitively and uh, whatever the case may be a lot of fun and I just ran a roll of film through that and I will also post what we have taken with that you know at a future date all right now this is a Roliflex this is a 1960s or 70s um, medium format film camera that means it shoots 120 millimeter or square format um, film this camera is uh, you know fully manual and uh, it's actually quite a lot of fun. This one has the pentaprism as opposed to the waist level viewfinder, which I find to be a little bit easier. And uh, this even has a pistol grip, which you can attach to the bottom. And I don't know, I mean, that whole ensemble looks a little bit nutty to me, but whatever. It's an original accessory, lots of fun. Uh, moving along here, we have the Nikon F100. This was a camera put out, I think, 98 or 99. Um, this was kind of, I guess, their, their prosumer camera. It had a lot of the pro features as well as um, kind of like more of a compact size for, you know, other kind of hobbyist photographers. Very robust, matrix metering, autofocus. It accepts all of my pro lenses. And the nice thing about this is that I can actually use any of my pro full frame lenses on this camera and I'll get, you know, full on matrix metering. I can fire flashes. I can do the whole thing with it. It's about the size of a D700 actually. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun to use, really easy to use, and being a Nikon shooter, it's kind of like second nature. So that's kind of a quick introduction to uh, my film cameras. There's a couple more back here, whatever. And uh, let's just get into looking at some of the stuff um, that I've shot with film, and we can kind of just get a sense of, you know, what that looks like. All right, let's go to that. We are back, and we are in Lightroom looking at a just quick selection of some stuff I shot with film. This is a good friend of mine, Alexandra, who is a, an, an actress, and I was doing some headshots for her. And, uh, you know, just a really nice portrait, and, you know, shot 51.4 with the Nikon F100. And, you know, again, the beautiful thing about this is that I can just take the same 51.4 lens that I would put on my D3S or my D700, throw it on the F100, and bam, here we go. Um, the difference, of course, is film. You know, it's going to look different in film. You know, particularly when you scan in uh, a negative, you're going to get all of the, um, the uh, detail in here and all the grain. It actually comes in as information. So something real nice about that. And moving on. Here is my friend Josh. This was shot with the Pentax, 50 millimeter um, and uh, Fuji Superior film. Um, random location somewhere in South Brooklyn. Here we go. We have um, some dude from the Mermaid Parade kind of doing it up. And this was shot with the F100 with just a 35 millimeter F2 lens on it. 
Um, and uh, you know, the cool thing about the thirty, the F one hundred, is that you know you can shoot one eight thousandths of a second. Okay, so you can be outdoors shooting, you know. 400 film and you can actually really kind of get that that aperture pretty far open so you can get the background kind of blurred out like that but still keep you know your subject fairly sharp or very sharp all right this was shot with the Rolly flex um, at the mermaid parade and uh, for those of you that don't know the mermaid parade the mermaid parade is kind of like brooklyn's equivalency of mardi gras um, but just in Coney Island and you know I recommend anybody that comes to visit New York you know if they have an extra you know few hours or whatever get on the subway go out to Coney Island have a Nathan's hot dog walk, walk the boardwalk bring your camera and uh, walk steeplechase pier it's actually quite quite a lot of fun and, and for photographers just there's no end to stuff to photograph out there even if you know the parade's not going on of course anyway just to get back to this you know when you pull out something like you know a 50 60 year old um, you know vintage uh, camera like this medium format camera you know people tend to respond favorably and they're like oh cool camera you know it tends to loosen them up and and you know as a photographer it gives you a little bit more latitude in photographing them because you've got an instant rapport you know because these were you know complete strangers and you know sometimes for you know that can be a little bit awkward all right um, here's another shot done with the uh, Nikon F100 and this was shot with uh, the new Kodak Porta which you know the cool thing about that is that it's it's got very low grain so it's um, you know the color is still there it still has that kind of film vibe to it but uh, just not as grainy all right this was shot with the uh, Nikon F100 35 millimeter and uh, you know this is what I would consider a street shot um, just walking along through the boardwalk it was packed there was like thousands of people there this guy was completely badass looking I went to take his picture he shot me this look I was able to grab it and you know what really makes this you know Coney Island is the steeplechase pier um, in the background there uh, a couple of friends of mine, photography duo as they are called, um, they were, you know, we were on, I guess what you would call a photo walk, and, uh, you know, uh, I just snapped a quick portrait of them, and I love the interaction of what's going on in the background here. Uh, this was the uh, egress for the parade here, and obviously this dude was, you know, quite amused by these ladies, which is a lot of fun. Um, here's the uh, subway station, the Stillwell Avenue subway station, and uh, you know it's kind of a, a, an engineering marvel. It's got you know just all this all these structural elements and stuff like that. So it's just made for you know kind of like a nice uh, you know architectural shot if you want to call it that. Um, I ducked into a uh, an abandoned barn upstate. You know this was a gigantic t tractor tire. In fact, this tire was probably taller than me, and I'm 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 a good six feet tall here. And um, you know there was this uh, just this word think painted onto this. Uh, I don't even know what this was. It was some piece of wood against the wall. And, um, you know, just there's something about the quality of film that just has this nice kind of vibe to it. Um, you know, this was just a bunch of folks hanging out casually, you know, just chilling out. And again, there's just something about the film quality that I just, I just love. It just looks, you know, a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, a little bit thicker. Um, again, you know, here we go. You know, same kind of thing. This was again shot with the F100 with the 35 millimeter. And, um, you know, I'm not advocating 35 millimeter, but I just think for carrying stuff around, it's it's a really great versatile lens for doing like street shots, cans, etc. This was at a car show in Queens. And believe it or not, this woman was sitting here and, you know, she had her vintage Pinto that was like absolutely dead mint. Um, and here was a couple of characters that, you know, shot me the, uh, the old Johnny Cash <laughs> classic kind of look here. Um, anyway, so, you know, th this is film, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction. Now, film cameras, you know, they run the gamut. I mean, you could go out and you could spend thousands of dollars on a Leica, or you could spend, you know, well under $100 for something like, you know, this Russian camera, or even something like this Pentax. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's vintage Nikons. Even this Nikon F100, which is really sophisticated, can only be had for a few hundred bucks. So, you know, maybe your dad, maybe your uncle, your mom, your aunt, your sister, your brother, whoever it may be, maybe somebody you know has a film camera. Now, if you're worried about shooting in manual mode and you're not quite there yet, there's a lot of things you can do. You can take your DSLR and you can go put 
put it in aperture priority and you can see what the settings are and you can kind of match them so let's say you were using a uh, 400 speed film you set your camera to ISO 400 you put it in aperture priority so that the aperture is going to match the aperture that you're going to be setting your your film camera to and then you see what the shutter speed is and then set the camera to that use that as a baseline okay there's other ways to do it you can actually use your iPhone and and get out you know a, a light meter app you can actually pick up light meters fairly inexpensively as well but we're not going to get into that anyway so that's a quick introduction to film uh, if you have any questions please email me at adamlearnerphoto at gmail.com that's it for now and we'll see you soon